This is not an easy question. In fact, it's one of the most difficult questions we face. It, it's analogous, say, suppose that you're on the beach and you're looking at depressions in the sand. How can you construct an ironclad rule that says this is a footprint and this is something made by a wave? Now, if they're very clear footprints, it's easy to say. But suppose it's sort of been washed over a little bit by the water, it's not clear, get up into stink, you get down to the point where you can't really decide anymore. Well, that's sort of the situation that we're in. So, there's two kind of signals we define. One is deliberate transmissions sent out by another civilization intended for us to find them. The other kind is leakage signals, signals intended for the internal use of another civilization, but which happen to get out, such as our own do, our own radio and television and radar. That's all going out, and we can't ever bring it back. Well, the leakage signals, we can't make any assumptions about. I mean, we know that our own radiation is so chaotic, we can't begin to understand it. It was just historical accident that things turned out to be on the frequencies they are and transmit them the way they are. On the other hand, intentional signals, we believe we can apply what's called the principle of anti-cryptography. In wartime, we have people who are called cryptographers. It's their job to encode the signals in such a way as to make it as difficult as possible for the other guy to figure out what's going on. Anti-cryptography is the opposite of that. We reason if someone is going to go to the effort to build a transmitter to send signals to some other civilization, they will make it as easy as possible for the other guy to find them, because that's the whole idea of why they're trying to do that. So then, with that assumption, it leads us to construction of a search strategy. The danger in all this is another big word called anthropocentrism, looking at things from the viewpoint of man. Just because it's easy for me to go out to the local Radio Shack store and buy a receiver that runs at a certain frequency doesn't mean that that's a good frequency to choose. There has to be more to it than that. Well, so one of the things this has brought us to is what frequency should we be listening at? Imagine now that uh, we're all together in a crowded room someplace, and I want to talk to you way across the room. And imagine that there's everybody's just talking. Might have a hard time doing that. But imagine it was all just women talking. And they're talking in relatively high voices. So to communicate to you, I would choose a frequency that was different from what the noise level was about. I might try to speak to you in a low voice. And then you'd be able to pick that frequency out of the other noise and interference that was present. We reason the same thing here. It turns out if we add together all the natural noises in the universe, the noise due to the galactic background, uh, the noise due to the quantum radiation, all sorts of noises, and we make a big graph of all these things. We have frequency running this way and noise level this way. The curve looks like this. There is a place where there's minimum noise in the universe. And that isn't something that we created. It's a property of the universe. And we know that, and any other civilization that has astronomers knows that too. So we reason, they're good communications engineers, for a given amount of transmitter power, they can transmit further and better in that frequency range than any other range they could choose. So we reason this is the place to start. We can't search all frequencies, all times, all directions. Man is not at that level of development. So we have to start someplace. So we make the assumption this is the place to start. That's the region with 1.4 and 1.7 gigahertz, approximately. So that's where we and almost everybody has been searching. There's another strange cosmic coincidence, which is probably unrelated to this. At the low end of this range, at 1.4 gigahertz, is the hydrogen line. That's a natural radio signal transmitted by hydrogen atoms throughout the universe. Now, hydrogen is the most common element in the universe. At the highest end, about 1.7 gigahertz, there is another spectral line, the hydroxyl line, or the OH line. And those are the only two common lines that there are in this range. Now, some people have waxed very poetic about this and said, well, now we have H at one end and OH at the other end. And H and OH makes water. And hence, this has come to be known as the water hole between these two places. And then, it's extended even further to say, well, now, the African water hole is the age-old meeting place of different species. And hence, this is a very nice poetic reference to the water hole from several different angles. And that's why we search in this particular region.
But it's probably an accident that the low noise region just happens to be at the same place where these two lines are. Other assumptions we make about anti-cryptography are they won't transmit only on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons. Because we may not be listening then. If, if they're going to make it easy for us to find them, they have to transmit all the time. Because we are the dumb guys here. We're just sort of gradually looking around here and there, and a sooner or later we'll come across them. Like, try to devise a strategy where two needles can find each other in the haystack. The receiver is 